at every point in human life, for every intelligent human being who is willing to look at their lives with some sense of openness, questions will arise. Am I… is audio okay? It's coming back to me. Questions will arise, am I really doing the right thing? Is my life going to waste? These questions will arise for every human being, successful or not so successful, it doesn't matter. Only for those who are a bit thrilled by themselves, such people won't get questions. They will address this question on their deathbed. For everybody else, with every step, questions will come up. Is this the way I want to spend my life? Because what you consider as life is just a brief amount of time. If you're joyful, if you're a very joyful and exuberant human being, it's a very brief life. If you're miserable, it's a long life because you have noticed in your life on a given day, if you're very happy and exuberant, twenty-four hours pass away like that. You're miserable or depressed, then a day seems like a eon. So time is a very relative experience. Those who are successful, reasonably joyful, questions will come up because time is just slipping away. Life is just slipping away. Is this what I want to do? Is this the way I want to be? So reinvention becomes a relevant factor. Before we reinvent, let's understand the word invent essentially means in its Latin origins, it means to arrive. To arrive means if you're in a haze of something, if you come beyond that, that's generally considered arrival. And when we say an individual, the root word for the individual is indivisible. That means you are not further divisible, you have become an individual. But that's not happened to most of the human beings on the planet. They are still an accumulation of many things finding expression. If you are sincere enough to look at yourself, unprejudiced looking, if you do, you will see what you consider as myself is a combination of many influences, too many influences. Your parentage, your genetics, your education, your exposure in the world, slowly you have accumulated your persona. Persona or personality is a hodgepodge of many things. You can't arrive as an individual in that. This is why it doesn't matter what kind of personality you have built, there is always a certain sense of lack of ease in these things because it's an accumulated concoction. An individual means not further divisible, that means you have become a being, not a person. Personality is there to work in the world, you need a persona to face the world. But 
this is an individual being. When I say not further divisible, in the world you do it in so many ways. If you're getting spiritual, you will become an expert in dividing yourself into many things. You will always hear language like this. If you're doing something, if you do it the way you want it, it's you. If you're pleasant, it's you. Suppose you turn nasty, you look back and say, that was my ego. And people will go further and say, this is my soul, that is my self, that is my Atman, that is my Paramatman. If there is more than one within you right now, that means you're either schizophrenic or you're possessed. You either need a psychiatrist or an exorcist. You must decide which one. Because there is only one here. But he… this is taking on many forms as per convenience. The most important thing is, an individual re cannot be reinvented, but has to be discovered, has to be explored, because personality has been invented by you. This being is not your invention, this is creation and the source of creation. When I say the source of creation, if you ate a banana in the morning, in two hours' time, this banana transforms itself into human form. So the source of creation is throbbing. Because one is not in touch with that, people are trying to make up their personality, they're trying to invent themselves. If you want to function at your highest level, you should not invent yourself, you must discover the nature of what this is. These things are happening because there is no experience of what this individual is, so we are making up things. We make up things by identifying ourselves with many things that we are not, starting from the body. It is obvious that you were not born like this, were you? It's a question. Were you born like this? You came like this and became this much now. I'm asking, are you all natural birth or did you drop from heaven, please? Hello? All normal birth, not a heavenly drop. If you're normal birth, you were born like this and now you became like this. Obviously the body is an accumulation. The content of your mind is also an accumulation. Everything that you have is an accumulation. What is an accumulation can be yours, can never ever be you. What you accumulate, you cannot consider that as myself. So fundamentally, because one does not strive, because the society in which you grow up, because the education systems did not make any effort to connect you with the dimension of this individual who is not further divisible, you start identifying with things. The moment you took on identity, your mind works only around what you are identified with. There is a a very beautiful situation which occurred in Akbar, the emperor, his life. When he was very young, when he was an infant, due to some political situations, he was separated from his mother for a period of time. Because he was separated from his mother, they brought in another woman who also had a child, to nurse Akbar when he was an infant. So she had a boy who was a few months older to Akbar and she breastfed both these children. Later on Akbar's mother came and at the age of twelve, twelve he was coronated as the king. By the time he was twenty-five, 
He was known across the known world as a great emperor. Somewhere along the way, he gave a few villages to this boy who was the son of this lady who breastfed Akbar because Akbar felt we drank the milk of the same mother, so both of us are brothers. So he gave a few villages to his elder brother. But by the time he was thirty, that man lost everything and again penniless. Then one day he got a bright idea, he thought, my younger brother has become a great emperor. If I go to him, maybe something will come my way. So he came. Akbar was deeply identified with this, we drank milk from the same mother, so we are brothers. So he welcomed him with the honor that should be given to an elder brother and brought him in and kept him in the court. But he is a village dud who doesn't know one thing from the other. He just looked around at the things that were happening in Akbar's, Akbar's court. Akbar had gathered enormous talent of musicians, mathematicians, all kinds of talent. He looked at all this, dazed by this. Then time to leave was coming. Then one day he told Akbar, See, the reason why you are doing so well here is, you got some really smart people around you. If I had such people around me, I would also become a great emperor. Especially you have this Birbal, he is too smart. If I had a man like him with me, I would also build a great empire. Akbar felt very guilty that his elder brother is feeling like this. He told him, if you want, you take Birbal with you. So this fellow felt very encouraged and said, yes, if Birbal comes with me, I will also become a great emperor. Then Akbar called Birbal and said, my elder brother wants you to go with him. You go with him and do whatever you need to do with him. Birbal's eyeballs rolled. What is he going to do with this fool? Then he said, My lord, why me? I will send my elder brother with your elder brother. And Akbar also was relieved because he didn't want to lose Birbal. So he asked this fellow, Is it okay if Birbal's elder brother comes with you? The fool thought, if Birbal is so smart, his elder brother must be super smart. And he said, yes. Next day morning is the send-off party, the full assembly of the court. He is leaving the brother, elder brother. Birbal walked into the court with a bull on the rope. And Akbar looked at this and said, what is this? He said, my lord, you wanted my elder brother to go with your elder brother. Here he is. Akbar got really angry. Are you trying to insult my brother? He said, no my lord, we drank milk from the same mother. <clears throat> the moment you get identified with something, your intelligence is just wrapped around this identity. It is because of this identifications, not one, many, a complex web of identities, you become a person instead of being an individual. A person means a mess. There is no person with clarity. A personality means it's a mess of things. So many things put together hodgepodge, depending upon what you are exposed to, you become a certain kind of person. But beneath this, if you have to gather all this, there is something more fundamental which is the individual. The individual being is there. That is why these accumulations of stacks of accumulations are possible. These accumulations can be analyzed, broken down, 
But the individual cannot be further broken down, it's indivisible, that's why it's an individual.